Hello class. Today we're doing green P2.8. <clears throat> All right, let's begin. We're asked to write the fraction as a decimal, okay? We understand that a fraction is a numerator over the denominator, okay? We understand that when this we see this symbol, it's actually a division problem because the numerator is being divided by the denominator. So our n is divided by our d. <clears throat> we recognize that our numerator is smaller in value than our denominator. Then we indicate decimal points, and we have the freedom to add zeros in order to have enough to divide, okay? So with that in mind, let's get started. Two divided by five. So two divided by five at our decimal points. Put our decimal point in our quotient, and we begin. How many fives are in 20? Four. Four times five is 20. We subtract. Problem is over when we have zero value. There's no need to bring down the additional zero. Okay? So therefore, our answer in this case is four tenths. Zero point four. Okay? Let's look at number four. Number four, we notice that our numerator is larger than our denominator, but still, we continue. Numerator divided by our denominator. Place our zeros, okay? And let's begin. How many threes are in four? One. Four minus three is one. Bring down our zero. How many threes are in 10? Three. Three times three is nine. Subtract, bring down our one, bring down our zero. Now we begin to realize that we have a repeat situation here. Okay? So, and when we see our number begin to repeat itself, how many threes are in 10? Three, nine, subtract, one is going to repeat. Therefore, we recognize that this is a repeating decimal. So we put a bar over the repeating value, okay? So our answer is 1.3, okay? The bar over our three, okay? So number four is a repeat. And number two ends, which we call a terminating decimal, okay? Let's take a look. Now... On numbers five through eight, it asks to complete the statement using less than, greater than, or equal to symbols, all right? So here we recognize that if we're going to do this, then our uh, number comparison, either they both need to be in fractional form or decimal form. If we put them in fraction form, then we would, have, we would need to convert the fractions to ensure that both fractions have the same value in the denominator. And so then that becomes an extra step. And uh, the more steps, the greater our chances of uh, making an error. So the simplest thing to do in a case like this is to convert our fraction to a decimal. So let's get started. Our numerator, four divided by our denominator, five. This is an odd number, that's for you. I'm gonna move over to number six, the even number. Our numerator, seven, divided by our denominator, 12, add our decimal places, okay? How many 12s are in 70? Five, five times 12 is 60. Subtract. 70 minus 60 is 10, bring down our zero. 
How many 12s are in 100? We have 8. 8 times 12 is 96. Subtract. 100 minus 96 is 4. There's a 0 here. We could pretty much go one more time because we have three numbers behind a decimal uh, place. So how many 12s are in 40? It's 4. And 4 times 12 is, I'm sorry, 3. 3. 3 times 12 is 36. And we can stop there, recognizing that this number is 5, 8, 3. Then we know that this value is greater. Okay? All right. Now, let's look at number 8. We have our decimal here, so we're going to move here. 17 divided by 30, our decimal point. Give myself some room here. 17 divided by 30. How many 30s are in 170? So we recognize that that is approximately 5, 0, 150. Subtract 20, bring down the 0. How many 30s are in 200? It's approximately 6, that's 0. 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract 20. And so it is going to repeat, okay? Because we have uh, 20, if you add a 0, it'll be 200. So this number is 5, 6, 6, and with the repeating 6. Sorry, this number is 5, 6, 6 with a repeating 6. Okay, so now, when we compare, we can say they're equal, but we can also say that this is greater if we were to round it. So this is one of those um, um, values, uh, problems that is uh, teeter-tottering on the fence, but we're going to say equal if we look at the first two places then we would say that these values are equal. Okay, let's move forward. Um, it says write the number as a fraction, then write the fraction as a decimal. Here we have 7 tenths, 7 tenths, and here we have 7 tenths. The 7 is in the tenths place. Okay, let's look at number 12. Number 12, you traveled... 25 and a half miles to a friend's house. The odometer started at 13,520 and 8 tenths. What will your odometer reading be reading when you reach your friend's house? So if this is where you started and you traveled... 25 and a half, okay, then you need to add this amount to this current value, okay? So now, what does this look, look like in decimal form, okay? When we think of our half, okay, so then our one half is actually our one divided by two, okay? So how many twos are in 10 is five, that's 10, and our problem is over. So this is actually 25.5, that's 25 and a half, okay? So then if that's the case, we add that value to our starting amount. So 13,520. Add 25.5, add it, and then we line up the decimal points when we're adding decimals. 8 plus 5 
is going to give us 13. 5 plus 1 is 6. This is 4. This is 5. This is 3. And this is 1. That's our uh, total amount at the end of our trip. All right, let's look at number 13 to give you a little help. Table shows jumping distance for three long jumpers. Here they are. Okay. Convert the jumping uh, distance to decimals, then order the jumping distance from least to greatest. So once you take the fractional amount, okay, and convert it to a decimal, all right, then you will have your whole plus your decimal, and then you can compare to see which order they should be in, whether it's ABC, CBA, or so on and so forth. And then here it says, how far, how much farther is the distance for jumper C than the distance for jumper A? So in a case like that, because you're saying how much farther, then you are going to do a comparison, which means you will subtract to get the difference between the two. Okay? See you in the morning.